Hi folks, I'm Ryan Shanahan and welcome to Rexport Education. Today's episode is going to be a little bit more casual. I, I thought this would be helpful and I want to tell you a quick story. Years ago, right out of high school, I had the opportunity to do some missionary work. And while I was out there with a bunch of other young guys and girls, we had a, sort of a, a mentor and a mother figure who uh, would coach us uh, through some of our, our daily needs and was kind of our nurse uh, for any kind of trouble we might get ourselves into. And she gave us some really good advice to all of these, these uh, young guys and girls who were uh, in many ways out on their own for the very first time in their lives taking care of themselves. Some of the best advice she gave was to have a well-stocked medicine cabinet. And that's something that I have taken to heart all my life. And some good advice I think is useful to pass on to you via this channel. So stick around with me as I empty my very own medicine cabinet and show you what I like to keep around, what might be useful for you to have. Girls with us today, hey puppy dogs. Squish. Hi. Hey Scrubs, how you doing? Okay. Good girl. Now this is for the full disclosure here. This is uh, most of what I have in my medicine cabinet. So there's quite a lot of stuff here. So I'm going to break this all down for you. It's really actually not very much. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, bringing this to you one by one. Let's start off with some basic disinfectants. I have two here. I have some isopropyl alcohol 70% solution and I have some um, hydrogen peroxide. Now these are useful for a variety of things. Of course, uh, um, alcohol can be used for cleaning, uh, but it's also a good disinfectant for mild scrapes and cuts. Um, it can be a little irritating to the skin, so and so sometimes uh, people like to use the hydrogen peroxide instead. Now these are both good disinfectants, but they're also both uh, fairly harsh on the skin. Alcohol, rubbing alcohol, may be a little less. Um, harsh on on the skin than hydrogen peroxide and they can be used for different things so you got to keep the this in mind they're not always appropriate um, because they they also both kill healthy cells in wounds so uh, you should be careful with the amount of use when you're considering this and that uh, uh, that killing of healthy cells can also delay healing uh, both uh, funguses viruses and bacteria uh, but also healthy cells. And so you got to keep th those things in mind when you're using these kinds of products. And for that reason, it's also good to have something like Neosporin around. Neosporin can be used as a pain reliever as well as a, uh, a mild disinfectant, and it aids in the healing process by keeping that wound uh, moist, and it can help even reduce the uh, scarring tissue or the, the appearance of scars as the, the wound heals. Now you can also get small first aid kits that have a lot of basics in it, something like this. It's easy to purchase or even something a little bit bigger. And these are nice because they have uh, preset alcoholic swabs and gauze, which can be really useful. Um, I definitely recommend having something like this around that you can store these kinds of uh, smaller application uh, devices easily in and that it's readily available to, to have. Also, band-aids, of course, always important. Enough said. Enough said. <laughs> now, here's one that uh, you may not have thought of, um, especially if you don't use uh, glasses or, or contacts. You may not think to have something like a little bit of saline solution for your eyes around but this is extremely useful um, again just like anything else so uh, you're working around your your house your apartment or uh, you're out on a windy day and you get something in your eye well one of the best ways to get that out is something like a saline solution um, it's better than I would say going to the faucet and trying to rinse your eye, although that's good in a pinch. If you have something like this around, you at least know that this is much more safe to use, and so you're likely to get a better benefit. Uh, saline to use solution, I use it for, yeah, like getting an eyelash in the eye and it's just being really stubborn. I can't quite get it out by uh, any other method. Uh, so I might use something like this. Also, when I'm in the kitchen, I'm cutting up onions and I get those fumes in my eyes and they make your eyes water. This can be a nice way of rinsing out your eyes to get some of that irritation from 
the vegetable out of your eyes. Now, speaking of other ointments that might be uh, practical to have around, cortisone is an excellent uh, tool to have. Um, it's used, of course, as an anti-itch cream. Now, there's um, a variety of situations where this might be practical. Uh, bug bites, for example, can help ease some of the irritation with that. If you develop some sort of a, a rash, like a heat rash, for example, it can aid in um, uh, relieving that as well and helping the skin to heal naturally. Another useful tool, of course, would be a standard thermometer. Now, you know what these are used for, and you just put this underneath your tongue, hit the button, and it, and it works great. Um, this is uh, good to find out if you or somebody who's close to you has a fever so that you can uh, treat them effectively with uh, other things that we can get into um, in, a, in a bit. And of course, if they need to go to the hospital, this is uh, uh, one way of indicating if that is uh, really necessary or not. Say if it's a mild fever, they've got a, a fever of a you know 99.8 or something like that, or even 100, might not really require any uh, intervention from a health pack practitioner. But if you're getting upwards of uh, say around 102, 103, certainly 104, well, you probably should go to, to the doctor and certain other things should be employed. Now these days of course you can also get the uh, head thermometers where you're not dealing with any kind of fluids from that body uh, and so you could just uh, get one of those thermal guns that put it up to the forehead and it reads the temperature and it's a very useful tool. You can also use that in the kitchen just put it on your pan to make sure it's at the right temperature before you're cooking your steak. That's how I usually like to use it. And I've got one other ointment that's practical to have around regularly, and that is some basic sunscreen. Now, this is an SPF 70, but there's a, a range, and you should research what, were, what would be best for you. Uh, but um, uh, having some standard sunscreen around is very useful. I think everybody should have it, no matter uh, what sort of uh, protection you naturally have as far as melanin. And the reason should be quite clear. Uh, the sun is damaging to your skin. Uh, the sun can increase your risk of uh, skin ailments, such as uh, skin cancers. And uh, well, we want to, we all want to be healthy and we want to avoid those kinds of things, especially for somebody like me who has a sort of uh, Irish and Scottish, Norwegian uh, type family history. Uh, this is really important for somebody like me. Um, I don't do well in the sun. I don't like getting a lot of sun, but uh, hey, I'm 37 years old and I look pretty young, mainly because I stay out of the sun. And of course, I stay away from things like uh, smoking and drinking alcohol, and that helps a lot too. Now let's get into some of the internals. Let's talk about some things like this, Tums. Useful to have around, but I'll tell you the truth. Um, I don't rely on these and, and I don't use them often like pretty much everything here. There isn't anything uh, in your medicine cabinet that you should be uh, relying on on a regular basis unless you have some underlying condition that requires it. Your basic medicine cabinet should have things that you need in an emergency. And uh, I definitely consider Tums around uh, those lines. Um, the reason I, I don't rely on it is because you can become dependent on it and um, it, it, isn't, it isn't necessarily good for you. What this does is act as an antacid. Sometimes you'll have uh, some acid reflux, you have some indigestion, uh, your, your stomach just isn't acting right and you're feeling that up in your chest area or even up in your throat and it feels uncomfortable and something like this is a great relief. Um, but again, you don't want to rely on it. See, the body reacts to uh, conditions that it's surrounded by. But in a like matter, I'll use this analogy of using hand lotions. People who use a lot of hand lotions are telling their the, the organ of their skin that um, there's too much moisture and so it stops producing moisture on the hands and so they start using more and more hand lotion. It's very similar with any other part of the body and so um, you don't want to rely on things like and acids too much because it can actually exacerbate your de uh, or cause dependence upon uh, the, the use of those antacids. <clears throat> so find other ways. Uh, change your diet. Um, eat some more greens. Really I'm just, I watch my diet. I make sure that I eat things that are not heavily processed for one. That's usually a, a big cause. 
but additionally there are other more natural things you can do and maybe we can uh, make a video on that sometime leave me a comment below and tell me if that's something you'd like me to focus on at some point another consumable might be um, cough drops so I like to use the Ricola because they have uh, more natural qualities to them and uh, using herbs and uh, they taste really good now uh, cough drops of course you're only going to use them when you have a cough now of course you want to pay attention to what kind of cough you're having um, is this throat irritation? Is this the onset of some kind of, uh, of, of sickness like the flu or a cold? Is it deep in your lungs and could this be a, a symptom of something that's possibly more serious? These are, kind of, are, are really important questions to ask, but uh, for a general, a mild cough or some, some general throat irritation, not necessarily a sore throat, although it can maybe uh, soothe some of the symptoms of a sore throat, <clears throat> you could uh, consider having some cough drops around and uh, and this is a really good brand I I enjoy it and uh, I find it's uh, it's very useful to have uh, now of course when you have a cough uh, there it's often the case that it has some other kinds of things going on there that you need to pay attention to and so uh, just be aware of that and consult with a doctor if need be Another one that's, uh, that I found in useful in my life to have around is uh, some Sudafed. Sudafed is a nasal decongestant. I don't rely on this regularly. This isn't something that I take on a regular basis, but it is something that I like to have around, especially when I'm um, coming, uh, coming off of a cold and I'm dealing with all of the nasal congestion of having a mild cold. And so Sudafed can be really useful at helping uh, prevent secondary symptoms or secondary conditions resulting from some sort of um, mild infection that you may have like a nasal infection moving right along we've got some stomach reliever now this is uh, this is basically Pepto-Bismol it's a chewable tablet and it helps relieve issues with stomach irritation so maybe you're feeling a little nauseous maybe you have some indigestion uh, maybe you're having diarrhea for whatever the reason that may be this is an excellent solution for that uh, if you're having diarrhea of course uh, that's uh, that can become a an issue of hydration and so something like this to relieve that so that you can maintain hydration which will help you uh, fight off other infections and and keep a, a and keep yourself more healthy uh, would be important to do. You should be reading the label and only taking it according to what the label says. Uh, otherwise, you can cause um, some other types of problems for yourself, which would be easily avoided if you just stick to the label. <clears throat> One of the things, of course, it doesn't really help with is something like food poisoning. That's going to be a more serious condition. Um, often something that you can get through within 24 hours on your own, but sometimes may require medical intervention. Now, let me see here. Um, okay, let me talk about this real quick. Um, it's probably a good idea to have something like some rubber gloves around as well. You never know when you might uh, need to help somebody else, somebody who's visiting, who's may, may have hurt themselves in some manner, and uh, you need to help them. You don't know what kind of pathogens are out there. Um, and uh, sometimes you want to reduce um, the, the potential for secondary infection in yourself as well. And so anytime you're handling a wound, it is a really good idea to use something like this and so having a, a box of these around they'll probably last you a really long time they're rare you, you won't have to use them regularly but uh, really good to have around now if you ever get really sick which we're human let's face it you're probably gonna get really sick at some point in your life it's just a fact of our existence uh, you could pick up the flu you could get a cold these can escalate into other conditions something uh, a little stronger like uh, theraflu or um, nyquil um, this here is a cold and flu multi-symptom relief box um, for night and day uh, pretty useful to have around this helps with uh, if you've got a cold, if you've got a cough from um, nasal congestion it deals with sinus congestion it deals with uh, stomach irritation it's kind of an all-around uh, uh, cure-all and it's it's very useful again I only use it when I really have bad symptoms I really need it 
can help you uh, get some better sleep at night, which aids in your recovery process. It also has acetaminophen, which we'll talk about a little, in a little bit, which uh, is a pain reliever, uh, is a pain reliever and a fever reducer, and so can be very useful for that. And so uh, relieves things like uh, headaches, fever, sore throat, minor aches and pains, runny nose, uh, runny nose, excuse me, sneezing, coughing, and is alcohol free. So pretty useful to have around. Again, very rarely use, but I, I'd rather have it in my medicine cabinet than not have it in my medicine cabinet when I need it. Let's get into one other. Um, gas X. Okay. If uh, you're on a high protein diet or you have been eating a lot of beans, maybe some chili, uh, maybe chili cheese dogs, pretty good stuff, right? Um, it might be useful to have something like this around mainly for other people but sometimes you might encounter a situation maybe it's a, a secondary product of having some kind of food poisoning or like a mild food poisoning uh, but you're having some gastrointestinal pain where too much gas is actually building up in your intestines and causing distress and discomfort and even pain gasx is your friend in that case and so these are chewable tablets pop one in chew it up swallow it Oh, you, I don't, well, I want to say almost instant relief, but you'll, you'll have relief very quickly. Um, it's usually the case with this. And so uh, very useful to have around. And consider this, if you have just had a meal that's causing you to be gassy and you need to go into work, you need to be around other people, you've got a social event coming on, maybe consider having something like this on hand because you don't want to be that guy or gal at the party. See, we're actually getting through this pretty quick, which is awesome. Let's talk about Benadryl. Um, I actually don't have any allergies, at least nothing that's ever affected me horribly that I've needed antihistamines to help me, but I still have it in my medicine cabinet. Why? Because you never know when you ha might have somebody over uh, who does have an allergy, maybe one that you're not even aware of, that they have a sudden reaction to something and may need some help. Um, especially for mild symptoms, mild allergies. Uh, maybe it's a, a pollen issue. Maybe it's a, re a mild reaction to something that they've eaten. Uh, for example, one thing that, uh, that a lot of people aren't aware of is the effects of artificial food dyes in foods. Some people actually do have some uh, f fairly significant uh, reactions to, uh, to dyes, especially things like Red 40, uh, Blue 1, uh, and others. And so something like this around can help alleviate those symptoms and help them to recover. Now, of course, as you know, a lot of people use things like Benadryl for, for uh, children to help them sleep. It's not necessarily a, a really good thing, maybe not necessarily a bad thing too, but you shouldn't use things that uh, are off-label. But uh, these do tend to make people uh, drowsy, and uh, I would not use it for that purpose. Um, use it for its intended purpose. Uh, helping somebody who's experienced some mild allergies. Something like this uh, Benadryl release, everything from runny nose, itchy throat or a nose, uh, sneezing, uh, itchy watery eyes, uh, stuffy nose, and sinus congestion. So that's what it's used for. Use it for that, nothing else. Now we kind of get into so the sort of a big three here. What I've got here is some Excedrin, uh, which is a, a, a type of Tylenol, um, also known as acetaminophen. Uh, we have ibuprofen and we have aspirin. Now, all three of these are, are good mild pain relievers, aches and pain relievers, uh, muscle pain relievers. And so as an athlete, if you're uh, working out regularly, these can be your best friend. I remember, for example, when I was in basic training, me and some of the older guys ended up kind of living off of ibuprofen for the last few weeks of our training because what we were doing was quite stressful on the body. Ibuprofen and aspirin um, act very similarly. Um, I've got some bare aspirin here and some general ibuprofen. They act, they react uh, similarly in the body and are um, mildly blood thinners. And so that's why you don't hear about aspirin too much these days because it does fall into that category of a mild blood thinner. And if you have a, a potential for bleeding, such as in the brain, we don't want that at all. So 
Um, it's good for certain conditions. That's why they say take some aspirin if you feel like you're having a heart attack, uh, because those clots are going to have some relief and allow blood to get past the clots uh, with a mild blood thinner. Tylenol does not have the same problems with bleeding, which is why it's generally more recommended these days. So uh, Tylenol or uh, acetaminophen. Now they're, they're all actually fever reducers as well, and so can be used for that. But Tylenol is recommended a little bit more these days, uh, especially when it comes to something like migraine headaches. You can get something like Excedrin migraine, which is acetaminophen um, with some caffeine in it. Uh, and so um, this is actually the one that I use when I have really bad headaches and I get headaches from muscle tension, um, especially in my shoulders. So I get impingements uh, at these attachment points around the shoulder blades and it kind of runs up my neck, goes behind my eye. And, uh, and this is what I find works best for me. Now, um, you may or may not have headaches, but in any case, if you, if you are experiencing headaches and you're not sure the cause, and they are kind of regular, um, something like this may be a, a good solution for you. However, keep in mind that even so, even though I do experience um, the migraine from time to time, I don't rely on this. Um, and there are reasons for that, because any medication you, you take, if it has an effect on the body, it can also have a negative effect on the body. So keep that in mind. That's actually a good litmus test for any alternative medicines out there. There's plenty, right? And if they say there are no downsides, you're probably dealing with some snake oil there. That's quack medicine. Don't fall for it and don't spend your money on it. Um, if it can have an effect on the body, it can also have a negative effect on the body, which is why these things are useful but shouldn't be relied upon. So anything like acetaminophen or aspirin or uh, um, ibuprofen uh, can have an effect on your stomach, it can have an effect on your liver, on your kidneys, and you don't want to tax them too much, which is also why you need to pay attention to the label, don't take more than what is recommended, and uh, consult with a doctor. But one of the other interesting things is about um, uh, ibuprofen or aspirin with uh, acetaminophen is that because they work differently in the body, they can be taken together. So you could take something like an aspirin and an acetaminophen, or you could take an ibuprofen and an acetaminophen or a Tylenol uh, together within the recommended dose, and uh, that might help with a, a little a, a little bit more relief of pain or symptoms that you're dealing with. Okay, that's the main stuff out of the way. Let me talk about just a couple more things, and that is um, some alternatives like vitamins. Okay, now I've got my box of vitamins here. I like to use uh, this one. It's called uh, Neutralite Double X. Um, I really like this company. I like the brand. Um, I, I like what they do. Uh, it's a very good vitamin that you can buy online. By the way, none of this is sponsored. So if you want, you can also donate to the channel by Patreon. But anyway, there's a lot of different kinds of vitamins, supplements out there. And a lot of them are crap. Keep that in mind. A lot of them are not what they say. So you need to find a company that you trust, uh, that actually has good ingredients, that's been independently tested and found that what is in that supplement is actually in that supplement. Otherwise, you're just wasting money uh, and you're not getting the benefit that you may think that you're getting. So this isn't uh, necessarily an endorsement of Neutralite and what, uh, and what they have. Uh, it's just what I use, and I'm just, I'm just being open with you. There's a lot of other uh, uh, similar companies or competitors that have uh, comparable um, supplements. Now this I like because it has a vitamin, mineral, and phytonutrient component to it. So I, when I take this, I feel like I'm getting um, an excellent supplement to my diet. Now again, even though it's a, it's a general vitamin, this isn't something that I rely on all the time. I don't take this every day. I take it sometimes. Maybe if I know I haven't been, uh, been able to uh, eat regularly or get uh, enough of what I think I might need in my, in my diet, or if I've uh, recently picked up uh, on more exercises and uh, maybe haven't had the opportunity to eat the best, I might supplement a little bit from time to time with something like this. I also use it to be honest, uh, when I feel like I need a little more energy for the day, um, I need to feel at my at my op optimum best. Um, 
like like if I've got a stressful day ahead of me, it's a very long day ahead of me, I might take something like this, a, a vitamin, just to uh, give me that little extra boost of energy and feel good to keep my mind functioning well and uh, uh, staying healthy and uh, reducing stress in my life. At least that's what it does for me. Now, of course, there are all kinds of different supplements that you can take in addition to a basic multivitamin. So I don't recommend any particular type of supplement. It's really a judgment call. It's up to you and your research. But there are some things that are useful for athletes uh, that could be good to have around, something like maybe potassium. Potassium is what is essential to helping your muscles function. It's in your sweat. Uh, when you've been working out um, and it needs to be replenished regularly so uh, having something that you use from time to time like a potassium supplement could be useful in aiding in your recovery and in getting the most out of your workout. Now there's also something like kelp. Now kelp is interesting I'm going to read right from the laptop. <laughs> right? uh, so kelp is high in antioxidants including carotenoids and flavonoids which help fight against diseases causing uh, free, free radicals. Antioxidant minerals such as magnesium and zinc help combat um, oxidative stress and may help protect cardiovascular health and prevent cancer. Yeah, carotenoids uh, are, are uh, protective uh, well, they're protective things for cells. They, they basically protect you against uh, carcinogens, uh, which cause cancer. So it's uh, good to have around. You get them from eating vegetables, um, and <laughs> that's pretty much it. But you can take something like kelp to get some more of those minerals, those essential minerals and uh, protective agents in your body. Um, it's just good for overall health. You can take this regularly, and uh, you're, it's not going to be a problem for you. Um, another one that I like is chlorella. Chlorella? I'm not really sure how to say it, but I, um, I like this a lot and um, I'll read for you the reasons behind that. So chlorella is a type of algae that packs a, a big nutrient punch as it's a good source of several vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. In fact, emerging research shows that it could help uh, shuttle toxins out of your body and improve cholesterol and blood sugar levels, among other health benefits. So there's a lot of things that you can get from Corella. Uh, these uh, algae supplements are the same thing uh, that fish eat and what gives fish their smell and, uh, and color. And so something like this can be uh, really useful. Yep, a little bit, little bit like fish <laughs> smell. Uh, but yeah, very, very good for you. And you can see it's, uh, it's just this very green pill because it's algae. And yeah, it's all really good for you. You can also take uh, similar um, uh, substances which help and give you vital nutrients like iodine from things like um, seaweed. Uh, kelp is a type of seaweed, but you can also buy those, uh, those nori uh, leaf packs that are good supplemental snacks that are, uh, that's another way to get it into your diet. Well, gosh, that actually went pretty fast. See, there's really not much here, um, but a lot to learn about uh, each of these things and to consider other things that uh, might be useful uh, to have in your medicine cabinet. So I hope this was useful to you. Please leave a uh, comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what I missed, what you think might actually be useful to have um, in your medicine cabinet. And uh, I would appreciate a like and a subscription to the channel. If you have any suggestions for future episodes, I would love to hear about those as well in the comments. Um, until next time, stay healthy.